Nine Inch Nails running. Hi, I'm Zios Pantera, the host of Z Reviews, and these are the Bukart P300s, the affordable option from the Danish speaker maker. Um, I've got quite a few of these in the house, not, not this particular model. I got my originals. I've got the, let me think, they were the, the A is the active, so this was S400, original Mark 1s, S200 Mark 1s, which I think they immediately stopped making. I've got the A500s here, which were the $5,000 self-powered speakers that completely changed how I thought about speakers right into the point where the a 700 showed up and then it changed completely what i thought about speakers in fact i think those original ones also were some of my favorite speakers of all like they took what i knew and just said oh fuck all that danish speakers and i'm like ah so passive active active i have i actually have the other ones the uh, s 400 marks one and two on my shelf over there so i am just abreast with bukart and I sit here, or stand here, I guess I'm, I'm standing, um, with the new affordable ones. And I'm going to tell you what the affordable ones cost. It's roughly $1,500. One gemstone. And they look remarkably, as being a P300, it looks remarkably like one of the 400s. Like it's got the giant ovoid passive radiator. We have slightly cheaper speaker terminals. The finish is nice, but it's not quite as nice as it was in the other one. But to make up for all that, it's available in much, much nicer colors. I got to show you now because I actually have an email chain going back and forth with Maz, who is the creator. And let's, oh, oh, it changed color. Oh, so you have the choice of peach, which I asked for. And he said, we're sold out. And I'm like, you're sold out? And I'm like, yeah, we don't have peach. We also don't have ocean. Wait, where's where's ocean? Blue. Then they have a green, a military, like, what did they call it? Olive. They've got, I am, have you not seen my windows theme color? Wait, where the hell is it? Look, look at the green. It's legitimately the same color as my windows. Maybe that's a like, secret in to make me love something. And then they have the standard white, which I say standard white, that's their speaker, that doesn't count. Triangle comes in white. What other speakers have I got in white? The Q Acoustics. So white's a nice color because white is light and airy. And then of course you've got the black and the black is very black. Uh, the original sets I have are black. No wood colors because the wood veneers cost too much. So at 1400 euros for the P300s, and we go back here. This is, wait, I went too far. This is all the passive stuff that they have on offer. As you can see, we have the S300 Mark II SE. So that speaker, but Mark II sold out. We've got the S400 Mark II Signature Edition Fauna, 2,850 euros sold out. And then the S400 Mark IIs, which are the ones I have over there, which are available in wood finishes or black or white which are 2,100 euros a pair, and then these at 1,400. So now here's the thing. Here's the problem. There is a problem. Um, S400 Mark II. I have a set. I've listened to it. I love it. I got the P300s, these. And I'm, I set them up, and I'm using them, and I'm using them on different amplifiers because I actually have a little bit of a power need. In case you haven't noticed, there is my vintage, much my father's vintage Pioneer VSX D1S here. I'm a little wary of Class D after an well, let's just say an incident. And um, this is 130 watts per channel. And it may not be enough to satisfy me. I'm running the Musician Pegasus R2R DAC into the Aoun S17 Pro headphone amp I'm using as the uh, Class A preamp into this, which I'm running into the power out inputs so that we're bypassing that thing's uh, preamp ability. And I'm just sitting here and it's just... Next song. So I was saying the problem, here's the problem, here's the problem. In my memory of what the 400s sounded like, they sound identical. From my memory, just purely my memory, I wasn't gonna do the thing where I set up the same speaker and I go back and forth and try to really diagnose the difference between one or the other. Because here's the thing, the 400s had their time. 
a year plus has passed, especially since the Mark One, to the P300 now. And I sit here and I swear to you, as I sit here and play whatever's coming on, this is Sunny Boy OST, which is, I can't trust anything to not give me copyright strike. So just, just, I don't know what you would improve on this. What's lacking? It's not the low end. It's not the detail, it's not the imaging, it's not the fact that I was sitting here before and I could have sworn to you that that speaker up there was playing sound and the Atmos channel. So I'm just sitting way back here and just going, wait, did I, is, is my receipt, what, what did I, did I do something wrong? No, no, it's just these speakers. I'll give you a little bit of a tour. Come with me and you'll see. Um, six and a half which has very interesting patterning in here. It's definitely a paper cone because you could actually see some of the threads in it. Um, the tweeter, which you can go back to any of the other previous boot carts or the 700s or the 500s, except for the uh, these guys. These guys have a standard tweeter. But the tweeter was specifically designed so that the, the, the spread, the pattern... So in other words, they measured this, because a speaker is a speaker is a speaker. And you measure how much sound is being produced at any given angle of said speaker. You just move a measurement mic around and you take measurements until you know, okay, it rolls off here and then here and then the frequency response changes here. What they did was they designed this waveguide with that little tiny baby tweeter to emulate the exact same pattern as the top, which there, I can't. I don't think of any other speaker company that tells me they've done that. Usually, if you move around in a space with any speaker, like a horn-loaded speaker here, or something that's got a flat, um, like really like unaimed tweeter there, excuse me, it just sort of changes. You move over, and you can tell the highs are still present, but the lows are different, and the lows are still present, and the highs are different. This speaker, no matter where I move, it sounds the same. Now, another thing you're gonna notice, well, first of all, by the way, the speaker stands are boot cart stands, and they ain't cheap. They're not cheap, like, they're not expensive to build. They're just three basic table legs with a, with a bracket. But my God, they look good. This is the first time in the review space that you've seen the correct speaker stand with the correct speaker on it. Another thing I should point out is the box, even though this is the cheaper unit, I figured one of the ways they would cut costs is by making the box simpler. They didn't. If you can barely see it, and the camera's a GoPro, so it's gonna be hard. But the box is slightly tilted. Not just the front, the whole thing has just a slight up angle to it. And with the tweeter on the bottom, which this is the correct way of not running upside down, what that does is it points it pretty much perfectly at where you're sitting. So you get this like, it's just, it's per. Every speaker that comes, I don't care how many millions of dollars you have. I don't care if your wires are cryogenically frozen and then defrosted and then sent to space and then sent back down to earth. If your speaker positioning is wrong, your shit going to sound bad. This takes into account the height of average speaker stands, certainly their speaker stands. I think these are 30 inches, 28 inches. Well, they'll do that in meters. Just go check the website for it. It takes into account all of that. And then it just sits down and works. Only you got to work out is the distance. And I've removed the speakers from back here. You guys remember the towers are back here, which allows me to shoot that. I don't even know if there is a size on this. I'm going to, if I move it, it won't be perfect again, but I'll have to move it. It's a relatively light speaker. I think they might have saved a little bit on bracing, but there is your rear. P300, made in Indonesia, designed in Denmark. That's another reason it is the most affordable version. I know that the drivers on a lot of these were made in a factory in China and they just special order them. But all the crossover designs, the box designs, and the finishing work has been overseen by them. So there is your, instead of a port, they have a passive radio that is not an active speaker. When the front six and a half moves, the back moves. And when the back moves, your booty moves. Because this speaker has probably some of the best, you know what? Other than the active Bukart speakers, I say this has the best low end. Could be because I changed the space slightly. Previously, I had, you know, what was essentially just acting as a diffuser panel back there. But now, wait, I gotta find something that's actually gonna 
shake. How do we keep back getting back to Sunny Boy? Frozen. Just all right, Billy Joel, which I've gotten not a copyright strike, but like no, no, no. It's not a bassy song, but there's bass in it. And if I was listening on any other speaker, the bass would just be, eh. But I'm noticing it with this. Brody Nom Nom. It would actually feel like a crime to put a subwoofer with these, at least at first. I implore you, if you buy these, if you spend the time and effort, because when I when people tell me like, hey, I'm Zio, so I'm looking to go for a good stereo setup, just stereo, and you start with the cheap stuff, the Mic RB42s and the Swan OS10s, linked in the description, and then you work yourself up, Q Acoustics, and then you get to like the thousand dollar mark and things start getting fuzzy. Because then you're like, well, am I going to stick with passive or do I get something active? You've got a ton of active speaker options. SVS has their active speaker. If you're going for passive, SVS has their ultra. You've got all sorts of good stuff in the Klipsch lineup. You've got the RP600M Mark IIs. These at $1,500, which is not nothing, but let's just face it, that's an average mid-fi headphone cost. I like these more than pretty much every headphone. Tungstens are these. I'd use these more. As much as tungsten is the greatest breakthrough in fucking headphone tech since, well, ears. Ears with piercing, I don't know. I will use a speaker uh, 80 times more than I'll use a headphone. Now that, granted, I'm in a basement of my own house. If you are stuck in a fjord, AKA living in an apartment, you're pretty much gonna be limited. But I'm not playing this very loud. This is relatively gentle, but it sounds full and imp like I put it in mono. This is the way you check to see if your distances are correct. You, you assume your amplifiers are correct and then you put it in mono. Yeah, I have a switch for my foobar. It's harder to do when you're using streaming or something. And if you list, if you have your, your room laid out properly and you have, I have a marked floor, if it sounds like the speaker, like the sound in mono is coming from slightly left to slightly right, you adjust the distance of the speaker. Now I have a laser level too to actually like mark the floor, but that doesn't always work. Sometimes you actually have to just listen. And I cannot tell you in mono that these speakers are playing at all. Everything is coming from that speaker right there under the television. Do you see it? I see it. Why does it sound so good? And then you take it out of mono and it goes, falls back to stereo. And it's like the whole, I I heard sounds coming from behind me. How you do that, Bukhart? Ah, ah, ah. If I had to take a guess about the design principles for the P300, and I'm pretty sure that I do, I think that this is Maz letting his hair down a little bit. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on like the A700s. The, you're gonna spend $7,000 on a powered tower. You're, you're selling to a certain person. Even the A500s were like, okay, we've got these specific uh, DSP corrections and it's very serious. This is serious speaker time, but he's Danish. You can't do that forever. You'd lose all your hair and all your fun and you just stop. So when you're making the cheapest speaker you're gonna offer, at least now, I don't know if they're gonna come up with something less expensive than this, or the most affordable speaker, I hate saying the word cheapest, it feels bad, but the most affordable option, you know who's gonna buy it. The people who, can set their sights and in a year spend $1,500. This might be the college student plus two years of working out there. You can buy these speakers. You put away $25, $30 a month and in uh, well, four years, I don't know, I can't do the math on it. And you can buy a set of these speakers, although they'll probably be the P350s out by then. I don't know, I'm just making things up. But that means, well, you don't have to worry about the audiophile assholes who are gonna spend $7,000 or $5,000. That means you can just go, eh, you know what? A little more low end, make it a little softer because there's no DSP correction. You're just stuck with his crossover designs in his speaker selections in the box. And I'm running like vintage Japanese amplification because I needed a hundred watts per channel to push it. But then the result, what comes out of them 
That scared the shit out of me because that's my ringtone. It's from uh, Saga of Tanya the Evil. I'm like, uh? These speakers are the most fun. Me, maybe not as much fun. Oh God, please don't fall. As these were, because I feel like these were toned to just be like, hey, how much bass can bass bass? And I'm like, really that much bass? That's insane. These speakers are a technological enhancement over that, but they keep the same signature. They just shake the whole basement. When the song calls for it, which I'm having... I switched my robot off. What the hell was that? Ah, oh, Tower of fucking God. Actually, this is going to have the bass, so give me a second. Ah, 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 I'm going to sing really loud so I don't get copyright infringement. I don't want to get a letter from Kevin Penkin, although thank you, Kevin. If you read, reach out, I'd love to talk to you. Da, 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 da. Right there. And I'm not even in the right spot because the bass develops together and it moves forward and hits that. But there's such a palpable feeling to the sound. More than just like, oh, it's got good bass, move on. Even the Swans, my beloved, and I'm gonna say beloved, my beloved MP300 Mark IIs, which are self-powered and DSP corrected and absolutely insane and dusty as hell. Jesus, these are dusty. <sighs> Need to pull them out and give them a run. Even these have the most thunderous bass of anything but they're self-powered and they're dsp to have that bass and for some reason it doesn't ever feel natural it's like hearing a live band and then all of a sudden the drummer is on an electric drum kit and that just doesn't do it these and i'll, I'll see if i could do this without again copyright goddamn oh I'm, now i'm in the right spot and it's just like Ah, uh, I can't tell when this song is going to be the song I need it to be. Here, Lero Row. That's insane. There's a, this is actually sitting on a subwoofer right now. This, this is sitting on my father's old, actually this might be my neighbors. They left it in the storage room when they moved out. Design Acoustics PSSW. Big passive freaking speaker. Actually, that amp powered it when I was back in the old Bronx room. If you've been here for the decade I've been doing it, that was the original. And it sounds like the subwoofer is on. These just, and it's not taking away from the rest because the speaker only has two drivers. Like the active ones have a front firing tweeter, a front firing active speaker, and a back firing active speaker. It's all active. It's all controlled. This has to just be controlled with physics. The tweeter is doing whatever the tweeter is doing at its cutoff point. The front six and a half is doing what it's doing. All the mid-range, all vocals, all kick drums, and all sub bass. And that rear driver is just carrying it through fucking trial and error and innovation. To have... That's insane. I've not heard a better $1,500 speaker, period. Not passively. Active? If we get active involved, yeah, sure. I've heard things that could compete with this, but not as natural. Not with the option to, like, I've got the Class A Aoun S17 preamp. I guarantee you if I bypassed that and I went straight DAC into normal, like, not Class A, it would have a little bit less of that vibe I'm looking for. But the speakers themselves, you, you can't, they don't lie to you. They just are what they are. I tried to run this system, by the way, I left it over here. I tried to run this system on the LA90 Discrete, which is a very lovely amplifier. I use it for headphones, and actually, I had used it on you, and that was the best pairing I'd ever heard. It was this speaker a little bit closer and on that. And I tried it on that, couldn't get it. It couldn't push them couldn't push them hard enough. I had to whip out. I was either going to use the mono blocks here, which are roughly the same power as that, or that. Or I have like a couple big amplifiers I'm going to go play with and, and probably use them on these speakers. These speakers will stay here. These speakers will not go away. And from now on, 
there's two test bench speakers, and I haven't had this since the channel began. I've had the RB42, which I've mentioned is like the starter speaker, which requires like 150 watts per channel to actually sound perfect. And then I've got these speakers, which require like 150 watts per channel to actually sound perfect, but then sound their cost. They're $1,500 speakers. They do nothing, they do nothing wrong. They, they do nothing, there's not a flaw on them. They don't, well, the treble's this, or the mid-range kind of ducks out when you're pushing them too hard, or I think I'm gonna blow them up. It doesn't happen. Everything I do sounds great. Everything they produce sounds like the best version of it I've heard on a passive speaker. Active speaker, I'm pointing at you, you're still, you or I have back there the Image 2s, which are again, active, self-powered, DSP corrected, room corrected. It takes a fucking lot to become like number one speaker in my brain. Those are $3,800 for the pair, by the way. So to come down to a $1,500 price point, strip away everything but the passive speaker and then still impress me this much. Ooh, rest in peace from The Mandalorian. Remember when that was a good show? I remember when The Mandalorian was good. I get, to, I get to complain about The Mandalorian now like I did about Game of Thrones. Mandalorian's new seasons suck. I watched, in fact, Zeos, link that f fucking six hour breakdown. It's two videos, six hours. Of this se it's a breakdown of this season of The Mandalorian and how much it sucks. And I couldn't agree more. It's the dumbest shit I've ever seen. What are you doing? Andor exists. Disney, look, Andor. Best thing you've made in fucking decades. Ever. Just make the other things nearly as good. And they can't do it. Fart. Skate. I don't know who owns that. Might be Sony. Gotta stop. And what would Brian Baitano do? I'm gonna stop this review. Because there's not there's nothing else I could say except for showing you the um covers, which are the same covers they've had for millennia, which are just little rings, um, fabric covered, little magnets that just attach themselves beautifully, perfectly, right to the drivers. If you wanted to cover that tweeter, you would end up with a speaker that looks like that. And then you'd immediately take these off because that's dumb. I want to see all the beauty and serenity. Hold that, will you? All right, I want to listen to Brian Boitano. What would Brian Boitano do if he was here today? Are sure he'd kick an ass or two? That's what Brian Boitano do. Links to these, there is no affiliate link, so buy at your own free will. Patreon and Subscribestar will help support this channel. If you can't, if you buy these speakers and you love them, consider giving me five bucks. For five dollars, you get to see these reviews early, which now that I'm changing my schedule means there's a, which now that I'm changing my schedule means there's a lot of videos hiding in the Patreon Subscribestar paywall because I gotta wait for them to come out. I can't, I can't push them out faster because the algorithm goes, no, it hurts. And I'm like, all right, whatever. So if you join for $5 a month, you support this channel. Patreon and Subscribestar will, $5 a month, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, which I'm not selling these. I'm probably not selling any boot carts, ever. They're that sort of speaker, except I do have two sets of the S400s, the Mark 1s and the Mark 2s, and I kind of like the Mark 1s better because of the way that, whatever. Point is, I shipped internationally for half shipping, free shipping content in the United States and Canada. I have 15 things in this month's yard sale. Who knows what it'll be in next month's yard sale? Check out the video. There's one every month, usually every month. Um, get to the sound demos. I haven't sound demoed these yet. Sound demos used to be on YouTube. They cause uh, copyright strikes, so they don't go there anymore. I get to use whatever songs I want, whatever wallpapers I want, only available to supporters. Um, I use good Neumann microphones, $1,500 set of microphones, record it you get to hear what the speakers sound like and then compare it to the other sound demos because you got to have something that's a point of reference. So if you want to access to the sound demos, including all the ones deleted from YouTube, see your views early and participate in yard sales, $5 a month. For $10 a month, you get into the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where you can ask me questions directly. Hey, Zeos, I have this budget. I have this room. What? And then I'm like, ah, oh, okay. What you want to do is you want to start with this, you want to get this, you want to get this. And you know what? I won't be the only one helping you. The people in there are so helpful. People that I've helped, people that have come in and taught me things. And then once you're in that chat, the $10 chat or 15, if you want to pay 20, I don't get 35, 40, can I get here 50, can I hear 60? You get into a lifetime swap me channel where you can buy, sell and trade gear with all the other previous $10 members. I think there's over 370 people in that swap me channel. 
And that's dated for whenever the hell I'm recording this, because there's always more every two, th two or three added a week. Then you can just sell your gear, you know, in a pretty like quiet little custom place with no fees, and everyone's just very happy, very, very, very happy. Anyway, I'm again. <laughs> fart, skate. Gonna listen to these speakers, and just shit, man. The, I, a new boot card is like once every two years, maybe a little bit sooner than that, maybe every year and a half. So. These are now the benchmark for passive speakers. The only thing that would make them better if they were in peach. 